Welcome to my review for Donkey Kong Country Returns, one of the most appealing platformers I have ever played. <laughs> Anyone? Any takers? Well, so Donkey Kong Country Returns came out on the Wii back in 2010, and it was made by Retro Studios, who is most well known at the time for making the Metroid Prime Trilogy, some of the greatest games of all time. And uh, Donkey Kong Country was originally a video game trilogy, platforming trilogy, starring Donkey Kong and his nephew Diddy Kong for the Super Nintendo, made by Rare Rare, or Rare, which was a second party developer for Nintendo back in the 90s. They made other games like GoldenEye, Banjo-Kazooie, Perfect Dark, uh, Star Fox Adventures was the last game. Um, and uh, all three games, like, they're classics, classic games, and uh, I feel like everyone for a long time was, like, clamoring for a new one. Like, I remember when I first found out there was going to be a new Donkey Kong Country game, I was just, like, ecstatic, because Donkey Kong Country was the very first video game I ever actually played or saw it being played, as I might have told you in my Super Nintendo favorite games list. So, so Nintendo gave, so Nintendo gave Retro Studios permission to make a new Donkey Kong Country game, one that would sort of be an updated reimagining as well as a sequel to the original game. Sound familiar? But I digress. Um, this game really is great. Um, Retro Studios, uh, really did a great job paying homage to classic Donkey Kong games, but updating, updating it, and uh, just making everything just so like modern and sheen, and just it's one of the best platformers of its generation. It's not perfect, but it's still a really, really good game. And I just I can't wait to get into the review for this game, to, just because um, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is coming out on the Nintendo Switch in a couple of months and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to start my review with Donkey Kong Country Returns. Enjoy. Story for this game. So several years but not too many years after Donkey Kong and his friends have gotten rid of the Kremlins in King K. Rule, a new threat emerges. A, a bunch of masks that have the ability to uh, hypnotize all of the island's inhabitants have awakened from the peak of the volcano. Now they managed to hypnotize pretty much all of the inhabitants and once again steal Donkey Kong's bananas. And it sure does drive Donkey Kong ape, ape stuff, if you know what I mean. Um, so Donkey and Diddy have to set out to save the island once again from these tiki masks and uh, free the possessed creatures from their influence. And of course save DK Island and most importantly Donkey Kong's favorite source of nutrition and wealth Bananas. The story really is about as simple as as it can be, but it's still like it's got charm in it, and it's uh, you know it's it's about the platforming, and this really gets is a good way to help get you into the just ter terrific platforming that this game has to offer. One of the things that impressed me so much about Donkey Kong Country Returns visually is just how organic everything looks and feels like if retro studios really went out of their way to really make it feel like many of the platforming challenges and you can see this in the level design really look and feel like a natural organic part of the world like a lot of the super mario games don't really have that level of just like detail i feel like at least the like the new super mario brothers game if i'm making a comparison but like here in donkey Kong country returns like you really feel almost like you're on on an island, which is weird to say, given that it's a silly game about an ape wearing a wearing a tie. Um, um, and one of the things I also just love about the visual design is just how the worlds feel so interconnected in this game. Like you can really see the transition of um, like one stage or area to the other, like like this area right here. And here in this, we see that Donkey Kong is starting out in the beach section. Now watch how it transitions into the ruins section. And just notice how seamless it is. How Retro managed to design it. You can see how it's something so simple, but it really does make a big difference. Now you can see here, like, it really shows the transitions between these two stages incredibly well. Like, 
It started out in the beach section and now we can see he's in an entirely different area of it just feels so natural and so organic and that's just the kind of level design that Retro Studios has always been super super good at and it's no exception in this game. Here in particular we see the puzzle that you have to solve in order to open up the pathway to the next area. You can see that he's climbing and now he's in an entirely different section. Just that, that level of just uh, organic level design is just ingenious and is really one of the things that I think makes this game as good as it is. Even though the Wii wasn't an H was not an HD console and was a relatively underpowered system, the game just looks great overall. Like the visuals are very colorful and just uh, have a lot of character to them. And I just love the designs of Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong and just everything about this game's visual design I love. The music for this game, Kenji Yamamoto took over from David Wise, who scored the original Donkey Kong game, and did reimaginings of many, if not most, of the original Donkey Kong game's music, most of which are very, very good. There are a few new themes in this game that also stand out. The music never quite had, can match that David Wise quality, though he did return to score the sequel, Tropical Freeze, which I'll talk about later. That said, the music to Donkey Kong Country G Returns is great, and it's very catchy, and just, uh, all I can say is it's a treat for the years, honestly. So, to control Donkey Kong Country Returns, I will be demonstrating with the Wii Remote in Nunchuck. So, you move Donkey Kong with the, uh, the joystick left and right. You can press the Z button to get Donkey Kong to run. You, of course, press A to make Donkey Kong jump. You can press A and hold it with Diddy Kong on your back to make Diddy Kong, uh, sort of glide a little bit with his jetpack. You press the B button on the bottom of the Wiimote to pick up things like barrels and what have you. And uh, while moving forward, you can shake the Wii, the Wiimote to make Donkey Kong roll. And uh, you can also hold down on the uh, joystick and shake the Wiimote as well to uh, make Donkey Kong blow, blow on stuff. Now having Diddy Kong on his back, Donkey Kong can roll much farther and faster. Now, when riding Rambi the Rhino, you want to hold you want to hold the joystick whichever direction and uh, shake the Wii remote to make Rambi run as well. Now, basically for the uh, for the minecart stages, it's pretty simple. All you do is press A to jump from one to another and sort of aim the joystick to where you want to uh, land. And uh, for the rocket levels in this game, basically you just press and hold A but only lightly touch it. Now. The controls for Donkey Kong Country Returns work very well most of the time. I say most of the time because there are a few things that do hinder the game just a little bit. Like, I would have much preferred having an option to be able to roll via just pressing a button or blow pressing a button. That, I, as, even though the motion controls are things you can get used to, they can still be a little wonky at times and can ever so often slip you up and make you feel like you were cheated in a death. Not most of the time, but some of the time. And I just have to grind a little bit about the Rocket Bear levels. Like, the control for the Rocket Bears really is just terrible. Uh, they should have just had you control it with the joystick, and instead you control it with A. But I'm going to get into that more in my favorite section, which is, of course, the ranting and raving section. Um, overall, though, the controls for Donkey Kong Country Returns are very good. For a 2D platformer, Donkey Kong Country Returns has some of the best gameplay of its era. Retro Studios managed to create level designs that were organic, fun, and very, very hard. It really harkens back to the older days of games, especially platformers, where games were a lot harder. If anything, this game is even harder than the original Donkey Kong Country, especially in some of the later levels, and that's saying quite a little bit. Like I said, the level design in this game really is just absolutely top notch. And everywhere you go, it looks, feels, and plays a little bit differently. You have like jungle levels, beach levels, you know, you have forests and mines and even uh, prehistoric mountain levels. You have like industrial levels, fire levels, and there's just so much variety. Like, you'll be running, th you'll be running, jumping, climbing, barrel blasting, mine carting, uh, rocket barreling. <clears throat> Uh, gliding with Diddy Kong on your back, collecting bananas to get extra lives, uh, jumping on enemies, rolling into enemies, fighting bosses, um, the whole shebang. It really is great, great gameplay. And uh, now I want to talk a little bit about Diddy Kong's role in this game. So, 
This can be played both single player or multiplayer, though I really haven't played this game with multiplayer much. When you're playing single player, having Diddy Kong with you is more of a bit of a little bit of like an enhanced temporary upgrade, although it is very beneficial, especially during some of the later stages, which are very hard, and some of the bosses. Now, Diddy Kong has the ability to glide longer, and when having Diddy Kong on your back, you can roll faster and farther. So it and of course it gives you two extra lives to boot. So Diddy Kong will take damage. If he's hit twice, he'll he'll die. Now the platforming in this game has to be very precise. Like it, this game does not give you an inch. You have to be as precise with your jumping as you can be. And ninety percent of the time, it is just player air when you die. And like in those moments, like you'll definitely learn from your mistakes, which really is something I love about this game. Is that I had to learn from my mistakes. I had to like make my reflexes better. I had to like uh, think about think like three steps ahead, and which is something I've always loved about 2D platformers, really good 2D platformers. And like I said earlier, just the level design like feels so organic, like almost like it's a natural part of the world, which is like if I compare it to a game like say New Super Mario Brothers, just nothing even close to that in New Super Mario Brothers. Like this game I think just blows that out of the water. Because I love the variety of the stages, I'm actually going to show you some of my favorite stages in this game. Enjoy. So I love this stage because you have this octopus that's just constantly chasing you with its tentacles and hitting you and causing you to lose life. You just have to like be on your toes all the time looking at where his tentacles may show up. This stage is really cool to me because it feels like something out of Indiana Jones. You have all these spikes and pendulums and uh, like uh, dinosaurs and parts in everything really. It's got just about everything I could want from like a prehistoric Indiana Jones-esque stage and I love it. I love this stage as you have to jump on totems as well as these little bats in order to get from one side to the other. You can see like all these totems like they open their mouths, some of them bob to the music as you can see but like in a very subtle way and it's just a really cool stage with a really cool background and this is another one of my favorite stages in this game. I love this stage later on in the game. I just love the design of the game, how you get to really see a view of the entire item. It's very atmospheric, and I love how you're barrel blasting up to the very top of it. Like, watch Donkey Kong here just barreling from one cliff to the other. It really is just an incredible stage, and just, I love the denouement at the end of the stage, where you just, you really get to see just an entire view of the island sort of silhouetted beneath these pink semi sunsetish clouds. Watch. I don't say this often, but this stage really does drive me mm -mm bananas in a good way. Last but not least, I love this silhouette stage earlier on in the level. I just love the design of it where everything is just like black and red and you can see like the sun ever so slightly shining and I just love how it not only does it open up some very neat gameplay puzzle design in platforming I just love the visual design of this stage too it really is one of my maybe my favorite level in the entire game and there's a few silhouette levels like this and I think this one takes the cake along with great level designs you also have great boss battles like the boss battles vary in size and uh, they're all overall really fun to fight and uh, very satisfying to defeat. The only exceptions are the second stage boss where you're just fighting a bunch of crabs which is basically a little bit boring because all they really do is move left and right and all you do is wait for them to move their claws up so you can roll into them. However, all the other bosses are all, like I said, just really fun to fight and Retro did a great job of just making bosses that were quirky but memorable and unique. Like, each one is unique. I'm going to show you actually one of the bosses that you'll be fighting in this game. So this boss is like a giant bird in a bit of a shell. So how you want to defeat this boss is he'll throw like a bunch of bombs at you. And what you'll want to do to take down this behemoth of an animal is throw the bombs at his shell in order to crack it slowly but surely. As you can see, I've picked up the shell and I dodged his uh, ground pound. Now you want to do this over and over again until it finally takes him down and you can get rid of the mass. You can see he just threw a giant uh, missile down at the ground. So the bosses also definitely uh, get more difficult as you fight them and they'll get a little more vicious and violent. And 
that makes the bosses, that really makes you sit on the edge of your seat every time you fight a boss. The only other boss that's a little bit forgettable, funnily enough, is the last boss, which is really just sort of an Andros knockoff. As you see here, all you really do with this boss is dodge his hands when he's running at you, and uh, duck, and then jump on his hands, and uh, then, once his head's on the ground, jump on his head. It's a little bit like Andros, it also reminds me a little bit of the boss Dan from The Legend of Zelda. So you can see, it's a somewhat forgettable final boss, but hey, at least it's still pretty cool. Other than that though, the gameplay in this game is great. It does have a few things about it that are a little imperfect, like some wonky control decisions and uh, the rocket barrels, which I'm going to get into when I get into my uh, ranting stage, which is the negative aspect of this game. But yeah, the gameplay in Donkey Kong Country Returns is very, very good. Some of the best platforming I've ever experienced, hands down. Replay value in Donkey Kong Country Returns is really good. One of the things about this game that I think gives it a lot of just re natural replay value is just the levels are so fun to play. Like, I just love, like, even when I'm, like, bored one day, just picking up my Wiimote and just playing through some of these levels just because they're so fun to play, even if I've beaten them, like, hundreds of times. That said, the replay value in this game also is really good. After you beat the boss, you open up, like, uh, the ability to... Like, if you collect all of the Kong pieces in every stage, you'll unlock an extra level in each stage. Like, and these are, like, really challenging levels. Like, they're, like, hidden temples, and if you beat all of them, then you can unlock the final, final, final stage, which is, like, the Golden Temple, which, frankly, I haven't quite done because it's not quite worth it f for me. And, apparently, there's also, like, a harder, like, reverse mode where you, like, play the game, but it's, like, uh... The game sort of semi-flipped and stuff, uh, which again, you know, if that's what you want to do, go for it. As for me, uh, I don't think it's quite worth it to do all that simply because, you know, for me, sometimes these replay, like, extra, extra, extra stuff is just a little more than it's worth for me. Like, I don't want to, like, pull my hair out, but yeah, as it is, I'm already, like, uh, almost gave my Wiimote flying lessons for some of these stage sections. But yeah, the replay value for this game is pretty good and uh, definitely has quite a little bit of a lot of extra things you can do, I should say, in this game. All right, the bad aspect of this game, my favorite part, ranting. All right, I just have to say it right now, the rocket levels. I love this game, but I hate, hate, hate the rocket levels. Not only is the control terrible, but to make matters even worse, it's a one-hit kill. Like, if you hit anything, you're down for the count. In fact, I just have to show you to demonstrate just how abysmally poor this stage is. Like, I generally think that they're just poorly designed stages. So if having to not run into everything wasn't bad enough, you also have these bad at you shooting sonar things at you. As you can see, just how easy it is to get hit. And in this level, you can see there are also moles trying to kill you. Some of them try to drop stalactites on you. It's just like, why moles? Why are you doing this? Why, Retro, would you do this to me? I mean, come on! To make matters worse, just when you think you've done with these stage, they bring them back in the last level, and they make them even more insufferable. Here you have these, like, flaming things flying at you everywhere. I'm surprised I even lasted this long when I was recording this play session. I mean... Look how ridiculous this is. Like, just try giving the stage a try and see how you do. Now, other things I don't like about this game, like I said earlier, the last boss can be a little is a little lame in my opinion. Like, yeah, it's cool that he's like this giant thing with two arms, but he just feels like an Andros knockoff and doesn't really have his own character. And the other thing I have to get into is, of course, the fact that there aren't options for to turn off the motion controls altogether. Like, I know Miyamoto wanted to, like, really utilize the Wii's motion control functionality and, like, everything, but, like, there were some places where it probably didn't need to be, and it would have actually been beneficial to just have had a button to, like, roll into enemies instead of having to shake the Wii mote all the time. The last thing I want to talk about is the villains. Yeah, I know it's a little petty, but honestly, like... The masks, they're not bad villains, but they just feel, they don't have the same level of character and charisma as the Kremlings of King K. Rule had. Luckily, Tropical Freeze brought in much, much better and much more memorable villains to the game. 
Other than that, there's not too much about this game that I don't like. At the end of the day, Donkey Kong Country Returns is a flawed but nonetheless brilliant 2D platform that has some of the best level design I've ever experienced in a 2D platforming game, many of which puts the games that inspired it to shame. Retro Studios n once again hit the ball out of the park with this one, and this is a gem of the game that should be in every gamer's collection. If you have a Wii, this is a definitely a game you should get. If you have a 3DS, of course you should get it as well. Even though it's not perfect, the things that it does well, the brilliant platforming, the great organic level design, and the visual design, the whole shebang, make this game worth the price of admission. This game is one of the best 2D platformers I've played, and I am more than happy to give it a 4.75 bananas out of 5. Well, that wraps up my review for Donkey Kong Country Returns. I know I haven't done that many game reviews. I had a lot of them planned. I was going to do Chrono Trigger, but then my file got erased. And, uh, yeah, so that happened. Uh, but I'm going to get back onto that. I have some plans for games. I get a review in the future, and I'm excited for it, and I hope you are too. Until next time, peace out, and have a happy gaming life.